What's up everyone? Today we're going to go over leak code 1034 color border. First, we'll go over some graph theory with connected components. Then we'll look at the input and output. Then we'll look at the BFS and DFS approach. And finally, we'll go over the code and complexity. First, let's go over some graph theory. Here are some connected components. Remember, a connected component is any collection of nodes that are next to each other and they have the same color or same number or some similar property. Here we have two connected components. One is green, one is orange. For the purpose of this problem, we're going to make a distinction between the nodes in one connected component. In the orange CC, everything that I've put a red dash next to is going to be called a border node. And everything that's pure orange, like this, is going to be called an inner node. The input is going to be a 2D integer array, integers that represent a coordinate, and an integer that represents a color. So if our input is this, and we have the coordinate of this targeting this point, and the color is 3, we have an output of this. How did that happen? We have to take the connected component that's at this point and color all the border nodes of that connected component to this new color. Remember, a border node is a node that's on the edge of the connected component. Another coloring we have to do is if a node is on the edge of the grid itself. Let's look at this example and see how that works. If I have a color green and my target node is this, I'm going to color this one green because it's on the border. It's a border node. Similarly, are all border nodes. Now, this is on the edge of the grid, so we're going to color it as well. The only node whose color didn't change in this connected component is this. That's because it's an inner node. So now let's see if that makes sense. We take the color 3, we go here, and we're going to color every border node the color 3. So this is on the edge of the grid, this on the edge of the grid, and this is also on the edge of the grid. That's how we have an output of 133 3 and 233. 3. Now let's look at the diagrams for BFS and DFS. The BFS approach is going to be pretty simple. It's just a standard BFS iteration where we start from the origin node and traverse everything in the connected component, but we're going to color every node we pull on two conditions. One, if it's on the grid edge, and two, if a node we pull has at least one neighbor which is a different color. So this node would be colored because we have a different color, a green node, which is right next to it. We check for this condition right after we pull from the queue, and we check for this condition when we're checking a node's neighbors up, down, left, and right, after we verified that the neighbor has not been visited. For DFS, it's going to be a slightly different approach. One, we recursively visit every single node in the connected component, and we set it to negative. But Upon returning of the recursive stack, if we find that node to be an inner node, then we undo our negation. Let's do a quick dry run with this connected component. Let's say our target node was here. We're going to begin visiting all the nodes in our connected component. So we negate this and we visit up, down, left, and right for recursive stack control to visit all the nodes. So we go up, down, left, and right. We negate this up, down, left, vi already visited, and right. So we visit here, negate, then we again do up, down, left, right. Up, recursive stack goes here, then up, down, visited, left, right. And upon returning this, upon returning this node, we see that it's not an inner node, so we don't undo our negation. Then the recursive stack goes back here, now we go down, we color it, up, down, left, right, and when this stack is returning, 
we see that it's not an inner node, so we don't undo the negation. Then we go here. So this guy finally has this one. That's negated. We go up, down, left is visited, right is vis where it's out of bounds. And then upon returning recursive stack, we don't undo our negation. Then the recursive stack goes here. So at this point, this one is going to give up recursive stack control. And it sees that it's an inner node. So we're going to undo. And the recursive stack fully comes back. So you see that all the outer nodes or the border nodes are the ones that have been negated and all the inner nodes are going to negate and unnegate so they're not going to change at the end. What we do after doing all the negation is go back and change the colors to, to the new color for every node that's negative. Before we look at the meat of the code, this is some helper method and some helper variables. So this is just to go up, down, left, and right when we iterate through our grid. And this is just a Boolean check to see if we're within the bounds of the input grid or not. Here's the code for the BFS. First, we initialize a queue and a visited set, and we grab the original color in RO or R0 and C0. Then we add our target node to the queue and mark it as visited, and we begin our BFS iteration by pulling the queue as usual. Upon pulling the queue, we immediately check to see if that node is on the edge of the grid or not. If it is, we color it. Then we go up, down, and left, right to check the neighbors. If we haven't visited the neighbor and it's within the bounds, we check the color. If the color is the original, then we add it to the queue and add it as visited. Otherwise, we're going to color that grid of RC as the new color. Eventually, we just have to return the grid in place. Here's the code for the DFS. I've taken a helper method called isInside to say if, is a, if a node in the connected component is a inner node or not. I didn't write it here because it's too long. So as always, I'm going to link the code in the description below. Check out the GitHub page. Now let's look at the actual code. First, we grab the dimensions and then we grab the original color and we begin our DFS. So we pass in the required parameters and we return the DFS if we're not within the bounds of the grid or we're visiting a node that's not the original color, which means we're not in the connected component. We don't care about those nodes, so we immediately return. Then we negate the color, marking it as visited, and we begin our four direction recursive DFS. So after doing that four side iteration, what we're going to do is check if the node that we're visiting at R0, C0 is an inner node. And if it is, we simply undo our negation and we return. The time complexity is going to be big O of C for both BFS and DFS. This is because we're visiting every node and the connected component. The space complexity for BFS is going to be big O of C, which is the size of the connected component, because we'll be storing the size uh, equip proportional to every visited node. For DFS, I'm going to say that there's no uh, extra space being used, so it's going to be O of 1. But of course, if you consider recursive stack to be space, then it's going to be proportional to the size of the size of the connected component. So that's how you solve LeetCode 1034. If you like the video, please thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe.